Hey, thanks for joining us online at The Assembly. We believe in biblical teaching and preaching, and this message is designed to proclaim the hope of Jesus. So be sure to share it with a friend or on your social media. We would love to stay connected as well, so be sure to follow our channel. We hope this message encourages you. If you take your Bibles this morning, our notes are, of course, in our church app. If you haven't downloaded that, please do. It's everything you need to know, but the notes are there every week, and also uh, the hard copy is in the bulletin this morning. I, um, I always... Over the past few few years, actually, I've just asked the Lord, what do you want for your church this year? Specifically, the assembly, what do you want us to focus on? And I'm going to be sharing a little bit more about that after, uh, after our spiritual emphasis week. But I thought today on the first Sunday, I, I wanted to talk about a healthy church. And that seems to be very common these days. In fact, our district superintendent, Brother Ronnie Morris, who spoke last year at our spiritual emphasis week, the vision that he has for our district, our state, for the Assemblies of God churches is simply this, healthy ministers and thriving churches. And we're looking at um, how can we help churches become healthy. Many of you know I'm, I'm part of and went this past year to Africa. Uh, this next year I'll be able to travel again uh, helping Alton Garrison with the Acts 2 journey, which is healthy church. How do churches become healthy? How do churches stay healthy? And that's what I want to focus on this morning as we go into this new year. It's kind of like Vince Lombardi every year that he would bring us a new class of freshmen in. He was the winningest football coach that there ever was. And, and he would start out with a freshman class and he would go in and he was going to give them the opening speech before the season started. And he basically went in and he would take a football with him. He says, gentlemen, we're going to start from the beginning. Let me introduce to you and let you know this is a football the basics, and I think sometimes even we who have been raised in church and go to church, I believe sometimes we take things for granted, and I am thankful that the assembly here in Salem Springs and the assembly campus in Gentry, we are a healthy church. It, it's, it takes work, it takes intentionality, and uh, you know, as a pastor, man, I hear a lot of things from people who they believe what church should be, or they think what church should be or shouldn't be, and you'd be shocked at some of the things that people have shared online or in an email or a note that they don't sign. What they like, what they don't like. I have found this to be very true. I knew it before the pandemic. I really know it now. Any decision that I make or the, or the church makes, it's not going to make everybody happy. It's just not. You can't make people happy. Uh, but I thought, what if we just kind of imagine something this morning that we could have available to you and to the church people that attend church? What if we had what I would call a personal church pod? When you came in, instead of sitting in chairs, you were in a, a pod all by yourself. I mean, think about it. I know it's kind of crazy, but, but you know, these things, we would never think that this would be a computer that we get to carry around with us 24-7. But think about a personal church pod. Um, it's an individual, soundproof, sealed booth at every seat. You say, well, what good would that do? Well, if it's too hot... You have your own digital thermometer, thermostats. You can adjust the temperature. How many cold-natured people are here? And you, you think sometimes it's too cold in the church. Go ahead. We're honest. We're a place of hope. <laughs> All right? Well, that, that's because your pastor is more hot-natured, and I'm under these lights, and I get hot, so they kind of crank the air conditioner up a little bit more. So you can set your temperature to your liking. If you, it's too loud... You can turn it down a little bit. If you don't like the song, there's a mute button. <laughs> or better yet, there's your own playlist. You don't like that style, so you want to put on your own genre of music that you enjoy until the worship team has finished their set. If you don't like my message, you can even mute me. And you can bring up your own
you can bring up your own favorite pastor or sound man. <laughs> if you don't want to fellowship with anybody or see anybody, we would offer you an upgrade pod. It would only have one-way glass. You could see out and see everybody, but no one could see you. If you get hungry or thirsty in your own personal church pod, there's a touchscreen menu. Oh, yes, there's no vegetarian menu, but there are food allergy menus. And you can order whatever you'd like to drink, whatever you'd like to eat, and an usher will bring it to your personal church pod. With your personal church pod, you can come to church, you can be comfortable. You can be happy. You can have it your way. You see, the personal church pod reminds me kind of of when we get on an elevator. In fact, this past week, we stepped on an elevator. And this is, what do you do when you step on an elevator? You step onto the elevator, and everybody does what? Turns around and ready to leave. All we want is just to get to where we're going. And sometimes that's what we do at church. This past week, we stepped on an elevator. Everybody turned around except for me. I'm just smiling. (laughs) And <laughs> looking, talking about, I mean, except for my family, everybody else was very uncomfortable because I was looking in their eyes. <laughs> then I finally turned around because my family was getting embarrassed. <laughs> but it's kind of like stepping on an elevator. You get in, you turn around, and, and what do you do? You look at the numbers, you look at the, you know, what floor you're on, you just kind of, you don't, you make eye contact, but if you make eye contact, you give a slight smile, and you're like, okay, I'm just ready to get to where I'm going. And so you just kind of do what you need to do. And sometimes that's how people treat church. See, church isn't supposed to be like that. We're not just here to endure this journey or to be happy or even comfortable. You see, we're all we're in this together. We have a lot of different backgrounds here at the assembly. We have a lot of people that were raised in homes that the mom and dad uh, were married throughout the whole their whole childhood we have some that come from broken homes we have some that come from non non church going homes we have people that have been going to church all their life we have a lot of different church backgrounds that come to the assembly and so there are no perfect people we know that there are no perfect churches because there are no perfect people but i do believe that every church should be a healthy church I believe that the assembly is a healthy church, but to be healthy, you still have to work at it. It doesn't just happen by accident. You see, a healthy church that fulfills the purposes of a church, they're laid out in Scripture. In fact, um, I, I want to read our passage of Scripture this morning, and you know that each week as we do this, we, we stand, and so I'm going to ask you to stand this morning as we read our passage of Scripture It's found in Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through 47. And in this passage of Scripture, we find out what the early church, the first century church, were doing. I will let you know and we'll see how effective this church was. It wasn't made up of perfect people. It doesn't that the church was perfect. It's just that they did some things, I believe, that we are doing and we can even be better at to continue to be a healthy, strong church. And so in Acts chapter 2, it's after the day of Pentecost, and 3,000 people got saved. So you have, you know, the, the, the church has exploded overnight. And then we read, beginning in verse 42, reading through 47, how they did it, how they did church. It says, all the believers, say that with me, all the believers, say it again, all the believers, every one of them. If you called yourself a Christ follower, if you called yourself a believer in Jesus Christ, this is what they did. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and the sharing in the meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers, say it with me, all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. 
And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. So Lord, our desire is to be a healthy church. We have just read the prescription, if you will, the ingredients for us to remain healthy, but to continue to grow in our health. So help us to apply the word of God today and not just listen to it. Help it transform us and help it, help it to allow us to become a better, healthy church. We ask that in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. We just read a description of a healthy church, not a perfect church, but a healthy church. You see, a healthy church is not measured by how many attends here. That's not our goal. Do we want the church to grow? Absolutely. Because the more we grow, the more disciples we can make and the more people who are, who are lost without Jesus Christ. That's what we want to see. He added to their number daily those who are being saved. I would love for us to be in three services here at the assembly. You say, oh, I feel sorry for your staff. They met every day. The goal is not for us four and no more. The goal is to go and make disciples and expand the kingdom of God. But we have to work together in order for us to see the kingdom of God expand. And so church health isn't measured by numbers. It's not measured by how cool our building is, how great our music is, the lighting system, the comfy part of it. That's not our goal either. That's not the purpose of church. Healthy church isn't measured by how much money that comes in or how big the budget or how small the budget is. It's not our dream. Can I share with you your pastor's dream this morning? It's very simple. My dream has been and will continue to be for us to be a healthy, thriving, growing church. That's my dream. That's my prayer. I want us to be a healthy, thriving church growing church you see that's the beauty of a healthy church you don't have to go to the drawing board and come up with something it's all in scripture in fact our mission is very simple here at the assembly our mission is this to make christ followers who make christ followers across the street and across the sea locally and abroad across the street and across the sea that's what jesus told us to do go and make disciples of all nations and can I just be very frank with you this morning, and I'm probably going to say some things that you may like and say some things that may not like as much, but I just want to share the Word of God because when you're healthy, there are some things that your trainer or your dietitian shares with you that you don't want to hear. And so I'm going to be your coach, your trainer this morning, reading the instruction manual on how we are to be a healthy church. Some things you like, some things you may not like. But what we have to understand is that we need to be a healthy church so people's hurts will be healed and that we can rediscover the joy of being part of a church family. You see, there are people that have left the church. There are people that have left this church because they're not happy. Our goal at the assembly is not to make you happy. It's to make you a disciple of Jesus Christ. And nowhere in Scripture does Jesus say, I've come so that you may be happy. That's not it, because sometimes when you're trying to be healthy, there are some things that do not make you happy. I went to the gym this morning. Guess how many people were there at 7 o'clock? Zero. I felt good. Now, I'm not bragging on my, on my end. I, I, I try to do that every Sunday and, and most mornings. But I'm just telling you, there were some people this morning that that was their habit, and they thought, you know what? I'm not doing that this morning. I stayed out too late last night. I'll just tell you, for, for me, Saturday nights are special. I don't, I don't stay up late Saturday night because I want to be physically ready and rested to deliver the Word of God and to worship the, Lord, uh, worship the Lord. Now, that's not you because you're not preaching, but I am. I want to be, I want to be aware. I want to be on point. And so we have to understand what that looks like. And so in Acts chapter 2, we see, first of all, that a healthy church is a learning church. It's a learning church. Look at verse 42. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They, will, they were committed to learning the word of God. And let me just share with you, one of, one of our core values is that. It is, it is the preaching and teaching of God's word, biblical preaching and teaching. But let me just tell you, it's not just reading a Bible plan. 
And we're encouraging you, once again, this year, go through the Bible reading plan. Read the Bible through in a year. I've already started this year. I started last week. And so begin reading the Word of God. But it's more than just reading information. This is so important. Write this down. Listen, information plus application equals what? Transformation. It's not just downloading a lot of information. But we need to apply it to our life, and that's what the early church did. They were a learning church. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. And my desire is to correctly divide the word of truth. And if you're looking for the latest trend or fad in sermons, I'm sorry, you'll probably be disappointed if you come to the assembly. I'm not going to preach on hot-button issues. My messages aren't flashy. I I don't share a lot of illustrations Nothing wrong with that, but if that's something that you are looking for, what we want more than anything is for us to hear the Word of God, apply it to our life so that our lives will be transformed. And so this morning, I just want you to know that we want to be a healthy church. We're we're going to learn God's Word, and we're going to apply it to our lives. Our core value, we value biblical teaching, preaching, and worship. It's biblically based. Biblically based, biblically based. We will always focus on scripture and refuse to avoid the commands in God's word that may make us feel a little uncomfortable. It's probably good that God's word makes us feel a little uncomfortable. But we won't avoid those those commands that God teaches us and he tells us in his word. And there's been times when I'm like, man, I don't know about this, God. Are you sure? Sure. Someone may not like this. I may not like this. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to learn God's word and be obedient to God's word. The second thing that we see is a healthy church is not just a learning church, but it's a loving church. It's a loving church. Look at verse 42 and 47. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Look at this. And to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper. Now, fellowship, if you've been around church a long time, fellowship is a common word. But if you go to Walmart and you see one of your buddies that you work with, and he says, hey, what are you doing tonight? Well, we're going to go over to so-and-so's house and fellowship. So I look at you and go, what? Now, we live in the buckle of the buckle of the Bible Belt. So most people may know what that terminology means. But for a lot of people, they go, fellowship, that, that, what is that? And so let me just kind of help you understand what fellowship is, hanging out. It's getting together. Let's have dinner together. Let's have a party together. It's connecting in a relationship, building relationships with one another. And this is about family being together and loving each other. A healthy church is a loving church. We love each other. We like hanging out with each other. It's one of our core values. We want to value all people. No matter what their background is, no matter what, what they look like, what they smell like. Why? Because God values all people, we should value all people. So we value people. We are more like Christ when we love and show value and love other people. You see, the Christian journey isn't made to, and, be, and meant to be walked alone. It's, well, I just like being by myself. No, 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 no. Even God said it's not good for man to be alone. And so with you saying, I just want to be by myself, you're going totally against how God designed you to be. So as we continue to grow, we, we've got to be very intentional about fellowship, about building relationships, developing relationships with each other. You say, well, pastor, how do I do that? Well, that's one reason why I encourage you to get involved in ministry. We have people that are involved in ministry, and, and you say, well, I, I can't sing, I can't play. No, 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 no. There's a lot of people that are serving, and they're in ministry that can't sing a lick. But they love what they do. They love our nursery ministry. They love our children's ministry. They like, they like making sure that we're safe as we are worshiping and they're walking around the building and on this campus to make sure that kids are safe and students are safe and you're safe. And part of the safety team, part of the hospitality team. Part, we, we have a team of, of ladies and people that cook when there's, there's a, a, a funeral meal. That, that t- that's their ministry. And they get to know one another. And that's why I encourage you to get involved in ministry. It's not so that we can function. Can I just make a statement? This church is turning 100 years old this year. First Assembly of God, which we were on on Oak Hill. This year we're turning 100 years old. Is that not great or what? You know what that tells me though? 
This church can function without me. It has for many, many years. And the church can function without you. But I'm glad that the Lord's allowed me to be at this church for over 21 years of that 100, to be a part and know the family, particularly here at the assembly. And so just be involved. Get involved in a Bible study class. Be involved in a life group. Be involved in a prayer group. Well, how do I find out about these things? Call the church office. Get on the website. Just ask. Go to the welcome desk. Ask for that information. We need each other. He said, why is it so important? Because Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Who is sharpening you? I want a brother and sister in the Lord sharpening me to be better in my walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. But it says that they had fellowship with one another. They came together. And it said that this early church did what we're about to do, the Lord's Supper. So would you take your communion this morning? And if you're watching online, you can take it with us. He said, well, hold it. There's no music playing. <laughs> hold it. It's not during worship. I, I just think that sometimes they were in people's homes, according to Scripture. He said, you know, we, we want to remember what Jesus did. So we're all here together. We're all here together this morning in his house, fellowshipping, we're going to take the Lord's Supper. So Lord, thank you. Thank you that right now with this part of the body of Christ, this part of the family of Christ, we can take the Lord's cup. And we remember, Lord, how much you loved us. And that helps us to be a loving church. When we struggle with loving others, help us to remember how much you loved us in spite of our sin, in spite of our failures, in spite of our shortcomings. And so, Lord, as we take the Lord's Supper as they did in the early church together in your house, we give thanks. We also ask, Lord, that you help us to be more like you, to show love and value all people. In Jesus' name, take the bread and the cup. See, we need each other. You need to be at church. I understand that there's medical issues that may keep people from church. I also understand that there's work that sometimes keep people from church. But I want to encourage you in 2023, make his church a priority. Make his church a priority. If you go to work on Monday morning, doesn't matter what you've done on Sunday night and how late you've stayed up playing video games or watching movies or can't sleep. The next morning, you're going to be at work on time. You may not feel like going. There's, there's Monday mornings I don't feel like going. I say, you know, I got to go. I need to go to work. I want to encourage you on Saturday night, whatever happens on Saturday night, if you stay up late, if you play video games, you watch movies, or for us, we have a big 80-pound black lab that woke us up last night because he doesn't like the sound of fireworks. Crystal and I laugh. We try to drug him up and make him go to sleep, but I don't know. I don't know if you've ever seen a scared, drunk uh, black lab trying to, <laughs> trying to hide from fireworks. He keeps us all up. The alarm went off at 5.15 this morning, and there my first thought wasn't, thank you, Jesus! <laughs> my first thought was, oh, God, I can't wait till 2 o'clock, and maybe I can take a nap. I'm just being real. Just being real. Make church a priority. Because most of the time when you don't feel like going to church is the time you need to go to church the most. And so this is the biblical model that we see in the first century church. They went to church. You say, well, they didn't have online. We really didn't either before the pandemic. <laughs> we've, we've thought about just cutting online off. But then there are people who really, that's how they connect with us because of their health and because of their work schedule. But I'm going to tell you, if you're watching online and you just stayed up too late last night, you need to be in church. We're here. <laughs> and 
Number three, a healthy church is a praying church. You hear us talk a lot about this. It says that the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to what? Prayer. They devoted themselves to prayer. Well, I don't know how to pray. Then learn how to pray. Have someone teach you how to pray. If you don't know how to pray, the best time for you to be at church is on Wednesday night during our prayer time, during our prayer service, so you can hear people pray. Even the disciples asked Jesus, teach us how to pray. We think when we accept the Lord Jesus in our life that everything just downloads and we know how to do everything Christian-like. How he's found out that's not true. Come early on Sunday morning, go to our prayer room. It's located on the east side of the building, just, just right to my left, down the hallway. Go in there before service and there are people, our prayer team's in there and they're praying for church. Just go in and listen. When they and just began to, to pray, just like Jesus taught the disciples how to pray, they can teach you how to pray as well. We're a praying church. It's a dynamic, ongoing, intimate conversation with God. And because, you're, because prayer is a conversation with God, it's how we connect to God the most because we're carrying on this conversation. You see, there's a core value that we have here at the assembly. It's called passionate and persistent prayer. It's not just one time. It's not just, now I lay me down to sleep. It's not just, Lord, bless this food and bless our time. It's passionate. It's persistent. Some of you, you fill out your, your, your communication card, and you've had the same prayer request on there for over a year, maybe two years, maybe three years, maybe four years. Listen, I want you to know, every Wednesday night, when you put that prayer request on that prayer list, we are persistently and passionately praying with you and for your prayer to be answered by God. We do not give up. We keep praying. We're persistent in our prayer. I want to encourage you to spend time with God every day in worship, in prayer, in Bible reading. And when you spend time with God daily, you begin to develop this deep personal relationship with Him. You connect with Him like never before because you get to know Him more. We don't only believe in prayer, but we practice prayer. I've already mentioned Wednesday night prayer service. It's one of the most important services that we have here at the assembly. Why? Because how we pray on Wednesday night, because we pray for every Sunday morning. Before we leave that room on Wednesday night, we turn around and we stretch our hand towards this room and we pray for you and we pray for God to show up and change lives. We're praying for missionaries. We're praying for people's needs. We're praying for our city. We're praying for our nation. We're praying for ministries. And an hour goes by just like that because we worship together. And I share the word that we're spending time praying. We need to pray, not just on Wednesday nights, but we pray. They're, they're, the church is open from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock on Friday. And I know that that doesn't work for everybody. But then we have a group of men that, that, that are praying on Tuesday morning. Jackie's still meeting at Tuesday morning at 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock. You, well, you know, i got to leave at 6.30, then come from 6 to 6.30 and just spend time praying. There's fellowship, there's prayer, there's times to pray. We'll close out today with praying as a church. You say, why is prayer so important? I know that as a believer in Christ, I know all those things. But listen, this is why it's important. It boils down to Matthew 21, verse 13. And Jesus said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of what? Prayer. The assembly shouldn't be known as a nice building. The assembly shouldn't be known as a good pastor or pastoral staff. The assembly shouldn't be known as a good worship and good music and good youth activities and good children activities. Nothing's wrong with that. But my prayer, my desire, if we're going to be a healthy church, we need to be known as a praying church. Someone you work with or go to school with, when they find out you go to the assembly... <laughs> May there be a desire in them say, would you mind, I heard that not only is that a great church and a healthy church, but I heard that that's a praying church. Can you pray for me? Absolutely. Why do we place an emphasis on prayer? Because a healthy church is a praying church. Because that's what Jesus said his church is to be known for, a house of prayer. Number four, healthy church is a supernatural church. Look at verse 43, and a, dense, a, a deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. Supernatural is simply when God does something we cannot do, better known as a miracle. It's something we can't do in the natural. 
He said, well, what, what do you mean? Well, there's an addict, there's an alcoholic, or a control freak that gets set free. That's a miracle. How many's praying for a miracle? They may be sitting beside you. The control freaks, what I'm talking about. But whatever is controlling us and we're set free, it's a supernatural miracle. When there's a sick body that is healed, and we've seen many, many healed, it's a miracle, it's a supernatural. When a marriage is restored, supernatural miracle. When a person with a bad attitude gets a good attitude, it's a supernatural miracle. When a greedy person becomes a giving person, supernatural miracle. When someone is trapped in a cycle of depression, but then they find the joy of the Lord, supernatural miracle. When a destructive gossip becomes an encouraging friend, it's a supernatural miracle. When a sinner accepts Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, it's the greatest supernatural miracle of all. And my prayer for 2023, as we become even more healthy as a church, that we see even more supernatural miracles take place. Number five, a healthy church is a unified church. And all the believers, verse 44, all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. God can use a unified church in a supernatural, powerful way. That's why we protect the unity of this church. We protect the unity of this church. If anyone, and we find out, and we, and it's not gossip, but we hear that there's someone that is bringing division or dissension in this church, we address it. There are too many people that are going to hell for us to be divided and bring division in the church. And so we just take care of it. When you join this church, one of the things that you sign on the covenant card is that you will protect the unity of the assembly. And if you do not protect the unity of the assembly and if you are involved in divisive talk, then we ask you to leave. Because we're just not going to put up with it. It's not biblical. Now, there have been people that have done that and they say, I'm sorry, I apologize, it'll never happen again then you're welcome to stay because we all make mistakes and we all kind of get sucked into that gossip lane. But if someone just continues and continues and continues, Paul told Titus, he said, warn them once, warn them twice, and after that have nothing to do with them. And so we just, we protect the unity of this church because they were all in one accord on the day of Pentecost. And then we see that they continue to share everything and have everything in common. And so we want to be a unified church. We we're, I'm thankful we are a unified church. Over 21 and a half years, God has brought unity to this church like never before. Has our church always been healthy? No. We had to be intentional about getting back on track and becoming healthy? Absolutely. We're not perfect. But I thank God that our leadership, that there's a spirit of unity on our staff and in our leadership and in our life group. It's, it's just wonderful. And my prayer is, is that will always be the case. But come on, let's get real for a minute. At some point, somebody's going to hurt your feelings in church. How many would just testify and say, my feelings have been hurt in church before? Come on, can I see your hand? Come on, come on. Let's be real this morning. You got your feelings hurt in church? All right, put your hand down. I'm raising my hand. How many's gotten your feelings hurt at work? Did you quit work? Then why in the world would you quit church? Has a family member hurt your feelings? Did you quit your family? Some of you go, yes. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you stick around here at the assembly long enough, number one, I'm going to hurt your feelings because I'm not perfect. Number two, you're going to hurt my feelings. But let's just make a covenant here. Let's not leave until a God tells us to leave, Right? So this morning, I probably already hurt your feelings, okay? But get over it. Go to Lowe's. Get a ladder. <laughs> Are we having fun yet? <laughs> what a way to start off 2023. But not only will you be hurt, but it's probably possible that you'll hurt somebody's feelings. Why? Because we're not perfect. But we address it and we handle it according to Scripture. Now, let me caution you. Because, yeah, let's handle conflict biblically. Well, resolving conflict biblically doesn't always mean you're right. 
What? When you handle things biblically, sometimes it shed things in your life you need to get straight. So often, healthy biblical conflict resolution begins with you admitting that you're wrong. Everybody just say these words. I am wrong. I am wrong. Come on, let's all say it together. I am wrong. I know some of you are like, oh, I can't say that. Just look at someone sitting beside you and say, yeah, you're wrong, all right. Number six, a healthy church. It's a generous church. Look at verse 45. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. Generosity is not about how much you have. It's what you do with what you've got. Biblical example, the, middles, the widow's might. They were giving in offerings, and Jesus is sitting there watching people give their offerings. Just a question, what would happen if Jesus was sitting by you when you gave? Well, he is. It says that Jesus was sitting there watching as they gave. I think I'm just going to round my tithe up. The widow came and gave two mites, not much compared to everybody else giving. But that's not what generosity is all about. It's not what you have, it's how you handle what you have. In fact, one of our core values is obedient generosity, obedient giving. When the Lord speaks to you to give, we want you to give. When the Lord speaks to this church to give, we will give. This year, it looks like we're going to be giving more money to missions than ever before. When I say missions, I'm talking about across the street and across the sea. Local missions outreaches and across the sea. Missions outreaches as well. In fact, this past year, because your generosity, benevolent needs in our church have been met. There have been people that have struggled this past year, probably more so even during the pandemic. And because of your generosity, we have been a healthy church because that's what we do. We, now, we support outside the church ministries, and we, we support people, but when it comes to our church family, we believe that biblically, if they, are, if they are being good stewards with what God's given to them, and they come upon rough times, and, if, if it, and, and, they, and we find out about that need, then we help take care of rent, we've helped take care of uh, utilities, we've helped take care of uh, hospital bills. We, now, some of y'all are writing, oh, wait, that's what the, no, 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 there's a process, because I don't think that the early church just handed out government checks or church checks i believe there's that system and that's what we have in place here at the assembly but we want to be generous and and if there is benevolent needs in our church family yes most definitely we help in, in that situation um you help send kids and youth to camp missionaries were sent to the mission field shoes were given to the students teachers were given gifts and and just as an encouragement they what's this for we just want to say thank you for teaching our children in the public schools we want to let you know that you're appreciated this past Christmas, uh, Crystal and I were trying to remember how many years, but this past Christmas, once again, because of your generosity, we were able to cater in a Christmas meal for our police department and the 911 dispatchers. We delivered uh, the meal, Danny and Jerry Bolstad delivered the meal to the police station so that those that were working at the police station and dispatch, they were able to have a meal. And it was a lot, so they got to eat on it all day long. And I don't know how many years we've been doing that, but that can't be done without your generosity. Right here in our own church, we have three missionaries that have been sent out. Joe and Jen Butler, Ability Tree, they're part of our church family. I mean, they're missionaries. They're, they're impacting people's lives. Janet Sherman is in Africa, and God's using her. We've been able to support those missionaries. In fact, <laughs> Paul and Ashley just left just right before Christmas, heading to Africa. We have missionaries that are being sent out of our church that because of your generosity, you are making a difference, and the gospel is being shared around the world. I began to think this morning as I was reviewing these notes, I'm thinking, wow, what would happen to the ministries if the local church wasn't able to support them? Joe and Jen, what would happen to the ability tree if local churches weren't able to support them? Yeah, Mike and Carlene, what would happen to Paul and Ashley if the local church wasn't able to support them? Well, you know, we could go get donations from corporations. Well, that can only go so much, but when the church operates the way the church is supposed to operate, all the needs are met. And it's beautiful. And because of your generosity... God is touching lives. We're going to finish this later in January. I've ran out of time. 
I thought I could get all these 10 points in. Y'all knew better. There's just so much to a healthy church. And we're going to become and continue to be a healthy church. We're going to study this this year. What am I doing to be part of God's healthy church? What am I doing to help expand the kingdom of God in a healthy way? Because I'm here to tell you, it's not easy. It doesn't happen by coincidence or accident. It happens intentionally. In the year of 2023, we're going to look how powerful his church is when his church is operating according to Scripture. Not the way that I want it. Although that personal church pod does sound pretty cool. We all have preferences, but my preferences aren't the goal in order to have a healthy church. So would you stand across this place this morning? I'm going to ask our prayer team to come, and and we're just going to close out this time with prayer. It's going to be a little different. I'm going to ask you, if you wouldn't mind, on this first day of 2023, it's 1121 right now, would you give nine minutes? Just nine more minutes. And I know if you have to go to work or something, I understand. But if if you don't have anything pressing that you need to go do, I'm going to ask for nine minutes. If you need special prayer for anything, if you just need to feel God's presence, if you need wisdom, if if you need a miracle, whatever, I don't want you to ever feel bad or feel embarrassed about just coming up for prayer. Remember, (laughs) We believe in passionate, persistent prayer. So I just want you to close your eyes. And if you need prayer, I want you just to step out right now and just come. But I need you to come first because I'm going to ask everyone else just to step out and come after you. But, but I want you to come because if you're needing special prayer, we want to pray for you and give you that opportunity. So Lord, those right now, they've come with burdens in their life. They've come with sickness in their body. They may even have sin in their life and they just want a fresh start. I ask that they will step out right now and they will feel not just our love, but they will feel your love and compassion. So would you just step out right now if you need special prayer? Because in about seven seconds, I'm going to ask everybody to just make your way to the front. And I know we can't all fit around the front, but I'm just going to ask you just to come as close as you can as the church, as his church. I'm going to count to three, and I'm going to ask everybody, everybody just to take a step. And what this is going to signify is that we are his church. We want to be his healthy church. He said, well, I'm a guest here. You know, I understand, but everybody's going to step out. Just say, I just want to be part of his church. One, two, come on, begin now. Three. Begin to step out. Just everybody, just step out of your seat and just come. If you need special prayer, just make your way. But I like, And if you will, just come as close as you can. Just come as close as you can. Sometimes we'll get bottlenecked, so just come as close as you can. And as you come today, just, just begin to pray to the Lord and say, Lord, here am I. I just want to be part of your healthy church. I just want to be part of your... Come on up, if you wouldn't mind. Make room for everybody. There's a lot of people coming. Come all the way to the, as close to the platform as you can. Just go ahead and step up. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Just fan out across the the front. Come on, let's just come to this altar area. You can just spread out all the way where there's an opening. If you wouldn't mind, just go ahead and come all the way up. Come on. Come on up. Fill up this gap, this hole. People are still coming. People are still coming. Would y'all mind just to scoot down a little bit? There are people still coming behind you. Just go ahead and keep going down. Keep filling in the holes. People are still coming. People are still coming. Just If there's a hole, just step into it. Come on, let's just spend the next few moments, let's just spend the next few moments just saying, Lord, I want to be part of your church. Where do you want me to fit in your church? You may already know, but just say this year, this year we're going to be part of a healthy church. Come on, let's just turn this time as the worship team sings over the next few minutes, let's just turn this into a personal prayer time, okay? So let's just begin to seek the Lord this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Again, thank you so much for joining us online at the Assembly. We hope this message encouraged you and we would love to stay connected. So be sure to click the link below and contact us and join us this Sunday. We can't wait to see you.